This is my plan to make $20 million in the next 12 months. Hey, my name is Miles, welcome to the video. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you get videos just like this. On this channel, I normally talk about things that I've done, like how I built an Amazon business that's now done over 12 million in sales, or how that business helped me to achieve financial freedom, to quit a career that I really didn't like, and to basically live my dream life, or like how I've helped hundreds of people to do that same thing. Those are things that I've done. Well, in this video, I wanna talk about the things that I'm going to do. So if, like me, you have your own financial goals that you wanna achieve over the next 12 months, then make sure to watch to the end of the video. And I hope that in some way, I can inspire you, I can maybe make you believe that your own goals are possible, like I believe that mine are possible, and maybe even to push you to think bigger about your goals. If I can do any of those things, then I'll consider my job done. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the three things that I'm gonna be doing to make $20 million in the next 12 months. First thing, I'm gonna scale my Amazon FBA business to over 12 million a year. And actually, this is quite a realistic goal. So last year, we did just under 6 million across our accounts and across our brands. That number is already going up, so now we're at 7 point something million. And basically, month on month, it's ticking over as we're just continuing to grow and grow and grow. One of the last videos I posted, I'll put a link here, I went over that process of growing from a much smaller number the previous year, 2 million, up to the 6 million and then where we're going as well in 2021 to get to this 12 million mark. So I do think it's very achievable. So if you wanna know more about the specific strategies, the things that I'm doing on Amazon or with my business, with my team, then you can check that video out or subscribe to the channel and just keep updated as I go through the rest of this year. Now, obviously 12 million in revenue, that's not 12 million in my pocket, it's far from it. But what I talked about in my previous video, which I'll leave up here, is about how the marketplace for selling Amazon businesses is really starting to mature in a way that's very good for Amazon sellers. So the maths, which I do talk about in the video, is quite simple. You can take the revenue, then you know, apply profit margin. So let's say it's 20% net profit on this 12 million. That's gonna be something over 2 million. I think it's 2.4 million. And then you apply a multiple to that to actually get what the business is worth. Now, if the multiple, let's say, is four, again, these are not exact numbers, but I'm just doing this to prove a point, um, 2.4 times a multiple of four, that business has just about an eight figure valuation or just under $10 million. That's a really freaking big number and I know that. I'm, I'm just a normal dude like you or a normal dudette like you. And the imposter syndrome that I feel when I say that and talk about these big numbers, I can really feel that inside even right now. And so I wanna talk about that for a sec because that, that feeling of like thinking about something that you haven't achieved yet, that's a really big audacious goal that feeling of just thinking that you probably, you know, shouldn't be doing that or you shouldn't be saying it out loud or you're not, you know, you're not worth doing it or something is gonna go wrong and just torpedo that idea and, you know, how dare you even think about it. That's called imposter syndrome. I've felt that so many times, I still do feel it. And I, I wanna mention that because I know that you, if you haven't felt it yet, you will feel it. And I just wanna get it out there and basically say that like, don't worry, when I say these big numbers, I also feel that. And that's a very normal part of this game and growing and changing and becoming, you know, more successful or growing as a person even. So yeah, if you, if you feel those like that voice of self-doubt or even you're thinking, Jesus, how can Miles do this and like talk about these huge numbers? Don't worry, no, it's okay. We all have to deal with it. And that really shouldn't stop us from creating these big goals and then from pursuing them and even from telling people about them, to be honest. Now, I just wanna tell you to play the long game. I'm really not here to tell you how to get rich quickly. I think getting rich quickly or the idea of that is a trap for suckers. I want you to play the long game and to get rich slowly. Not too slowly, but not too quickly either. So this journey where I'm on now, where I'm talk talking about scaling my business from six to 12, hopefully, that's four years in the making. It's more than four years in the making. I'm not going from zero to 10 million in the next 12 months. That can happen, but you really don't need it to, and you probably shouldn't aim for that, just like instantaneous success. Um, understand though, that if you're playing the right game and you're playing it well, so you're playing a long game, you're playing something that has that potential, like Amazon, like e-commerce, like a whole bunch of other things, everything as well, so firstly, it's very, very achievable over whatever two, three, four, five year time frame. But all of the, a lot of the value really gets pushed right to the end. And here's a really interesting thing that I just have been looking at now, my own business. So I've done up until today, over this four year period, plus you know whatever skills and experience I took into the business before that four years had even started. So it's like a long runway. Up until today, that whole period of time, I've done just over 12 million in sales. And now I'm sitting here telling you that in the next one year, so one quarter of the time, I'm gonna double that, or I'm gonna do, again, like four times as much as I have for the life of the business. And actually, looking back at my entire journey, I think this was always true at every point in time. I could always look back and go, okay, I've done this much in sales over the entire life, like everything up until now, 
And then what would happen is from that point, and then a year from now, or like a really short period of time after that, I would just double and do what I had done in that whole period of time. So it's really just seeing this like exponential growth playing out where the next year is always like equal to everything else that came before you. And all that means is that you gotta be in this for the long run. Because if you stop too early, these like increasingly large numbers that you can start seeing and just start not completely normalizing, but like it, they get bigger and bigger basically. You're really cutting yourself off from this. So that's it. I'm at the end stages of playing a long game. So I want you to play a long game too, but that's the first thing that I'm gonna be doing to get myself part of the way to making 20 million in the next 12 months. Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invest in other Amazon businesses and other entrepreneurs to help them grow and help them be successful so that I can be successful too. Now, to be fair, I actually wrote this down and then I realized this is not something that's gonna pay off in the next 12 months. So it's, uh, this is not something that's really gonna help me with the 20 million, but it's a multi-year time frame. But I just told you to play the long game. So I'm gonna include this anyway and talk about it since I will be creating value for myself, not only for myself, for other people, but for myself too, within this next 12 months. So even if I don't get paid for that straight away, I'm doing what I'm telling you to do, which is to play the long game and not just think about stuff that'll pay off you know, in the next six to 12 months. So I first mentioned this idea, this idea of investing in other businesses and of actually mentoring specifically people who have already have businesses, but actually taking a stake in that business. I mentioned that in my last video, it's still something that I'm just thinking about really recently, but the more that I flesh this out, the more it seems like a no brainer to me. Honestly, to me, a big issue with what I started doing, which is teaching people how to start a successful Amazon business from zero. The big issue with that, uh, unfortunately for me, at least, is that most people you teach will never actually finish what they started. Or in other words, they stay at zero. You, you try and take them from zero to somewhere and they stay at zero. And you know, in a way that's life. Like I've definitely, started lots of things, to be honest, where I never got past the zero. I just like tried it, I thought it'd be a good idea. Maybe I spent some money, maybe I got keen. I'm thinking about lots of like boxing probably was the last thing where I tried it, I bought some gear, went to a couple of lessons and the coaches there in the gym knew that I was probably most likely never actually gonna follow through with it. So from that regard, I can see what it's like. But the way that I picture this is like, if I was a cafe owner and I really loved making delicious like artisanal coffee, I sourced the best beans, you know, I did everything. And I spent, I just poured my heart into making these coffees. And then people come into the, co into the cafe and they buy the coffee from me. And then as I'm pouring my heart out into making the coffee and even the cafe experience, they pay me the money, but then they just walk out and never actually get to drink the coffee. So while that's a good business from the perspective of making money and it can easily be successful, it's not gonna feel that great for the cafe owner. So no more about that cafe analogy. Basically, I see this as a really high leverage way to continue to do the things that I'm good at, to continue to do the things that I enjoy doing, to help other people as well, which is really personally satisfying. If you don't know what this feels like yet, you will, you know, when you have kids or, or when you are in this like mentor or teaching role, to see somebody actually make personal change and develop and to make their own lives better in some way is a truly gratifying, satisfying activity to do. So I wanna do that. The other things that I've been thinking about, maybe some, some lessons that you can learn from why I'm thinking about doing this. Think about everything that you do in terms of maximizing your leverage. If you wanna make a change, you wanna make the most possible change for yourself in the least, uh, the least effort way, the way to do that is to maximize your leverage. Archimedes says, you know, give me a lever big enough and I can move the world. That is true. And it's all about picking the right lever. Some things you can think about now uh, are around your hourly rate. So what is your currently hourly rate? What are you earning in your job right now? Think about what that number is and think about ways, or actually think about your financial target that you wanna hit. So if you wanna earn, I don't know, 200K a year, work backwards from there, work out what is that hourly rate if you don't wanna to work to the bone to earn that 200K. Let's say you wanna work 10 hours a week and make $200,000 a year. I think that's a very good goal to go for. Now, if you break that down, you'll work out how many hours, or sorry, how many dollars per hour that is get that aspirational hourly rate, keep it front and center in your mind because working towards that aspirational hourly rate is gonna be the thing that increases your leverage, your personal leverage, your ability to do more with your time or to do the same amount with less of your time. And understanding that your time is the real constraint, not anything else, that's a really critical concept. You, know, you can do a few things with your time. You can spend your time as an employee, basically working you know, hours in, dollars out at, at a linear relationship. That's the worst possible thing you can probably do with your time. 
Um, you can, or maybe even worse actually would be converting your time and just thinking about ways to minimize expenses. Even worse than converting it into income because you can, you can grow your income to an infinite level. You can't cut your expenses less than zero. So there's like fixed, uh, there's like a capped amount that you can actually do there. That's a loser's game. The winner's game though is to invest your time into learning the right things. So invest that into knowledge rather than working in a linear relationship. Invest that into learning the right things, which will pay you then compound interest and just increase your leverage over time. So how am I thinking about leverage when I'm thinking about, okay, I wanna invest in other businesses. First of all, understanding that where I've come from when I was an engineer, I was making 100K a year, I was literally working in a direct linear relationship between you know putting X amount of hours, I get X amount of dollars out at the end of the day. And there was just nothing I could do to change that equation. Terrible, loser's game. Now I've gone way past that, obviously. I'm earning a lot more per hour than I was then. I'm realizing now that, and I have a lot more capital than I did before. You can leverage your time, and you can leverage your capital, and you can leverage other things that you have as well, other assets, and you know whether it's people that work for you or whether it's code, it's software that can run in the background while you sleep, do things for you, or again, it's your money. You have to start being more creative as you get higher up and you start, you wanna make more and more amounts or move the world in a bigger way. You need to start leveraging all of these things more creatively. So that's why I'm thinking about now, I'm gonna use the capital that I have as well as my expertise. So it's my time and my capital, maybe some code as well, I don't know in the background, to in combination to maximize that leverage and to help somebody else grow their business really quickly. So leverage is a really key thing to think about. And again, just, just be really conscious of how you're spending your time. Are you putting that time into learning the skills which are really gonna pay off when you can apply them in the right way? So. In this example here, I talked about how my business, I've been investing in the skill set to grow a successful Amazon business for more than four years now. So now that's the thing that I want to leverage as hard as I can directly into a way that's going to pay off. So leverage, the other thing that again leads me down this pathway and something that I think you can learn from is to take responsibility and own equity. So what do I mean by that? Firstly, I mean, don't be an employee. If you have to be an employee, then look for every possible way you can to take um, Look for ways to take on risk and actual real ownership of the outcome. The only way to be truly rewarded for the upside is to actually take responsibility over that outcome. So in this case, bringing it back to what I'm going to be doing, I wanna take responsibility for both the upside, which is the equity, and also the downside, which is losing the equity as well. I don't wanna just consult and like give advice or you know teach on this channel. I can do that, but I want skin in the game because that way my incentives are aligned with the person that I'm working with, with the person I'm helping to grow. Ultimately, I'd say for this one, like you want to be paid based on the results that you deliver, not the hours that you work. You want to be paid irrespective of how many hours you work. You want to get paid for the result no matter how quickly or how long it took you, just like get the job done and get paid for the job, um, the result rather. And you also want to be held responsible for the failure to deliver those results. The more of that accountability you can take on yourself, the more you get paid. And that's why I believe that doing this, which is investing myself and investing money and my time into the business, then taking the upside and, and helping to grow the business while also accepting that if those things don't help and if I fuck up and I help the wrong person or if I don't help in the way that I'm supposed to, then I'm gonna lose, not just them. So that's the second thing I'm gonna be doing. Again, it's playing the long game. It's not actually within this 12 months, but I'm gonna be investing in businesses and helping to grow these businesses and these other entrepreneurs. As a side note, if you do have an Amazon business and right now you're stuck on capital and you can see the potential, see that pathway to an exit, but you wanna maximize really like accelerate your pathway to exiting at a much higher valuation. You may be the person that I want to help. I will leave a link down below for an expression of interest form where you can go and leave your details and, and basically apply. And I may have a conversation with you. It's not the purpose of this video, but I'll leave it down below. The third way that I'm gonna get to 20 million in 12 months is by maintaining my conviction and my bet in cryptocurrencies and the bull market that it's currently in. This isn't something that I've previously talked about on the channel very much, but it's something that's taking a lot of my time and attention really, and not so much for the actual investing side because that's pretty passive. You basically just like have a strategy to buy, which uh, as an aside right now, the strategy really, the real gains to be made are in pretty speculative activities in altcoins rather than in like Bitcoin. If you want me to cover this sort of stuff in detail, how I'm approaching it, basically the buying strategy, the holding and also income generating strategy because you can actually earn yield on these assets. Um, and then also having a defined sell strategy. So if you get in at the right time and then you get out at the right time. If you want me to cover all of that sort of stuff in a separate video, I can do that. Make sure you leave me a comment down below requesting that I do that. I wanna try and gauge 
how much interest there is. But as an, as, as an aside here, I'm incredibly, and more and more so as time goes on, I'm very, very bullish on cryptocurrency as, as an emerging, I don't even, not even an asset class, but as a source of disruption for the world. I think so many things are gonna change. You, we are starting to see just the beginnings of it. But really, I don't think this is going away. Yeah, we're in for a volatile 12 months, let's say. I think it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, like it does. I've been following it since 2014, or at least Bitcoin since 2014, and over the last couple of years become increasingly confident and increasingly bullish. And then now it's just finally the floodgates have opened. Again, it's gonna go down from here at some point, but I think it's got a lot more upside to go and in particular areas of cryptocurrency as well. Looking at this from a meta level, I just see it's it's just reached the mainstream in a way that it hasn't hadn't before. Not only the mainstream retail, but also mainstream institutionally. There's a lot to talk about. So again, please do, if you do want me to cover these things in more detail, leave, leave me a comment down below. But the, the way that I think about this is just going where the waterfall is. And the I remember traveling in Colombia and just seeing as I traveled along the north coast of Colombia, basically going from, there's this area called uh, Palomino as a town. And it's like this lush, like there's this jungle coming down from this mountain range, the Sierras. And there's like a beautiful river and it's just lush and green and like all the stray dogs there, they're all like kind of fat and happy looking. And this is this beautiful, beautiful region. And then you go about an hour away, so really close. It's like the next door region to it is La Guajira. And it's just this dry, empty desert. It's beautiful, but I mean, for the people living there, I, I remember seeing this as I was traveling through these two different regions, like literally just going from one to the next and seeing this complete change from uh, abundance basically to scarcity. I, I just wondered like, why would the people stay in the desert when there was this beautiful jungle with you know, fruit and you know, just like water or fresh water, all this stuff that you need to survive and to live and be, and be happy. Why would you stay in the desert? And, and I feel like you can apply this sort of same sort of analogy to making money, to, you know, doing things with your life, doing things with your time, spending ways or, or like trying to grow and become successful. Why stay in the desert when there's a jungle right next door? Like if you want to live in a land where money grows on trees, then just move to the land where money grows on the trees. Like don't stay in the desert waiting for a tree to just pop out of nowhere and start spitting out money. So for us, if we're entrepreneurs, if we're trying to have financial success to, make money, build a business, whatever else. What is the jungle and what's the desert? I think the jungle is, could be two things. One, it's learning how to learn things quickly and then just going where things are new and where things are changing and, and basically disrupting the world. That's number one. Or number two, just get really good at the things that don't change. So for the first one, you wanna be looking for new platforms, looking for changing paradigms and then just trying to be early to them. As I become older and as I've seen enough of these and stuck my fingers into enough of them and seen the results and understand that like, okay, that's how the life-changing money is made. I'm getting better at identifying them. It's, and it's pretty simple. It's like, all right, the one that I see right now, and this is the third thing that I'm talking about is crypto. It's the changes to the financial system. It's the changes to things like actual like digital ownership. Those things will change into the future. And what you're seeing right now, Bitcoin is the store of value change and then Ethereum and a bunch of other applications built on top of Ethereum and probably alternative blockchains as well are gonna uh, start to attack the financial system. So that's this like big change that's coming. And it's just like the first waves of it. Now you're seeing a lot of speculation based on the ideas that will come out of that. Um, NFTs is like digital ownership, things like that, art. There are all these industries that are gonna be disrupted, if not right now, then over the next five to 10 years. That's, that's a waterfall, that's a jungle right there. Online education would be another abundance jungle. E-commerce is an abundant jungle. You can see it with just being early to any, any new platform, really. It's like, okay, Amazon, of course, YouTube, TikTok is one that's happening right now. Even, you know, being one of the early advertisers on the Facebook ads platform, whatever that is, just look for these things that are happening quickly, that have large scale potential to change, and then just learning how to learn that thing fast because it doesn't take that long. The second option is going for things that don't change and just become really good at them. So that's really our brain. It's this little plump thing in here. What things don't change and how can you take advantage of them? I would say learn how to build relationships, learn how to develop trust, learn how to create desire, learn how to build a team. Those are all things that involve understanding other people, the people around you, and just interacting successfully with those people. 
All of that, if you can understand how people work, the things that don't change, and then combine that with your ability to learn quickly and move into these new areas as they're actually on the way up rather than like the maturation all the way down, then you know that's what was the original point here. That's the jungle. You go where the jungle is. Don't stay in the desert. What's the desert? I see it as being university, traditional education. It's like going to college, paying $100,000 to go to college and rote learn when you could just learn the exact same thing by going to Google and learn it for free in a quarter of the time. Hmm. The desert is all of the industries and the professions that are gonna get disrupted by AI, by automation, by the remote workplace economy, which is now a globalized workforce. That's the desert. So this was a bit of a run on point, but my third thing that I'm gonna be doing in a big way to get to that $20 million mark in 12 months is looking for these jungles, staying away from the desert, going for the jungle. And the biggest one that I see is crypto. And that's what I'm making moves into right now. So those are the three things that I plan to do to make 20 million in 12 months. What about retirement? What about enough being enough? So I actually made a video about this a few years ago now. I'll leave a link up here. And in this video, I said that I was going to retire at 36 with enough passive income to you know, last for myself, my family, whatever, for the years to come. The points in that video that I made were to firstly, create a massive income using a business. Secondly, to turn that income from the business into passive income, lower risk, lower return, but also more sustainable. And then three, knowing when enough is enough. So that video was made not that long ago, and yet so much has changed since then. And I've shot past the goals that I'd set for myself by the age of 36. I'm not 36 yet, I'm 31. And now I appear to be going against what I said in that video and just setting larger and larger targets. So do I know when enough is enough? Really, I've come to understand that I have an obsessive personality. I love learning. I, it takes me out of the present. I can get lost and sucked down into things and new challenges that I'm encountering, ideas that I have, things that I wanna execute on. I can get lost in that stuff for days. I can come out of reality, not be present, and just go and get lost into this computer. I've been sitting in this apartment for like the last seven days. I've barely left out this door other than to go outside to get food and to go run and just like keep a bit of sanity. But you know what? I think I kind of like it. I like who I am. I like that I really enjoy learning. I like that I like building things out of the stuff that I learn. I like that I like sharing the things that I've built or the stuff that I'm learning and then just repeating that cycle with different things over and over again. That's why I'm back on YouTube right now. I genuinely enjoy this. And ultimately, I stand by what I said in that video. Once you find something that you're good at, that fulfills you, that you enjoy, keep doing that thing. And then once you're there, once you're doing that, I mean, retirement isn't once you stop working. Retirement is once you don't have to work anymore. As I said earlier in the video, play the long game and literally play the game. Play something that you enjoy playing for the sake of it. Do something that you would do just because it's a game and it's fun to you and it's enjoyable. That's gonna be the last thing that I wanna leave you with is whatever goal that you're setting for yourself, whether it's a big goal, whether it's a small goal, whether it's like mine, whether it's bigger than mine or smaller than mine, whatever it is, make it a game. Make sure that you enjoy it. Make sure that it's ideally good for the world. At least make, let it be good for yourself. Set that as a goal and then just set another goal the next, in the next 12 months. So I look forward to playing the rest of this long game with you. I'm gonna leave you now with a couple of actions. If you enjoyed this video, do leave it a like. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment. Again, if you wanna learn about the crypto stuff or anything else, just leave me a comment down below. Um, do me a favor. If you wanna get more insight into just stuff that I'm thinking, it'll be like links about Amazon, uh, things that I'm learning really on like a day-to-day -day basis, Go and follow my Twitter account, which I'll leave down below. I just created it. There's like almost no one following me at the moment, um, but I'm just gonna be posting stuff as like a stream of consciousness stuff. You know, I, I think you'll be able to learn something from it. So go follow me there. And as well, if you do fit that profile of the entrepreneur with the Amazon business who has a constraint to growth, but you wanna grow your business faster, you want my help, you want me to invest in your business to put money into it and then to help you along the way to get you to basically growing it much faster and then to exit for a much higher valuation. Uh, again, go that form will be down below where you can leave your details and actually make an application for us to have a conversation about that. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.